So, because of pain, so pain is essentially a protective mechanism for us. Without it, people wouldn't know how to stay alive, how to stay in one piece, they would have cut themselves into pieces. So, but sometimes, as what is called as a surgery, is in some way cutting people up. Sure. So you… it has become a necessity to cut someone. How to cut them? With minimum amount of disturbance to the system, that's the whole effort. So in this effort, as you said, essentially you're disengaging different parts of the brain. I don't know if it's an exact science or it's generally getting disengaged. Uh, whichever way, is it getting effectively disengaged that people go through surgeries without even knowing what happened, when something major was done to them, their ribs were opened up and ribcage was opened up, heart was opened up, brain was opened up, they don't even know what happened. Very innocently they wake up after a day or so, whatever amount of time. So this is anesthesia. How could we use… See, one… One dimension, because uh, when, when you… when we were speaking in the room, when you said, essentially, if I'm wrong, please correct me, you're monitoring the physiological systems of heartbeat, blood pressure and temperature and… Brain waves. …whatever else, the physiological factors. If… I don't know if it's even a possibility, but if… if you find a way to monitor the neurological system, ignoring the physiological system completely. See, the concern may be the moment you put somebody on the table and start opening the body, the concern of a doctor or a surgeon may be that you don't want him dead on the table. So you're watching his heartbeat, you're watching his pulse and you're watching his all the other parameters. Mm -hmm. I understand and appreciate that concern, but instead of Okay, let's leave the physiological uh, monitoring as it is, but if we have a way, I don't know if there is a way in the medical science, if we monitor the neurological system, not just the brain, the neurological system in the body, if we have a way of monitoring that, I think the entire art of anesthesia could raise to a different level at a very minimum interference it could happen because why I'm saying this is there is something called as marma in yoga mm -hmm. and also in what is called as kalari in South India, it's a certain form of martial art. Mm -hmm. Marma is a way of creating, killing the pain completely at certain moments when we want to, just by touching certain parts of the body, handling body in a certain way. Mm -hmm. So essentially what we are doing is, the neurological system, we are shutting it off. And there is no pain at all. We can go ahead and do what we have to do mm -hmm. and only when we release it, the pain will come back. Mm -hmm. So using that as a basis, I am saying, if medical science has a way of monitoring the neurological impulse as it's happening, and if there is some way to introduce… introduce anesthetics in whatever form that you use, I don't know all the cocktails that are used, but if it is done properly, probably… I, I'm just guessing, I'm not an expert on this, probably with two percent or three percent of your medicine, you could still have the same effect on the patient. Mm -hmm. Because how you uh, use any medicine, on the body and how you use it on the neurological system, I would say one percent of what you use on the muscle, if you use it on the nerve, it will produce equal effect. But it's interesting because I, I think what you're saying has contact also with the work that, that we do in the recovery phase and there are people now looking very carefully at cardiac and brain interactions and, and they do signal some of these changes. and it, it's suggestive, I mean, that maybe more, more of the uh, body could be in, engaged in, in the way we think and measure. And that, that makes a lot of sense to me, actually. Yeah.